Right, you might have noticed that with some kids, their knee starts rolling in or their foot collapses like this, or they both happen at the same time when they're running or playing sport. Now, you also might have noticed when that person or that child runs, when their foot comes behind them, it kicks out to the side, which sort of is making their knee roll in that way and internally rotating their hip. Now, that's a pretty common thing, but if that's leading to sort of shin splint problems, okay, either the inside or the outside, or knee pain in a child, or even Achilles problems, then I've got some exercises to work on the strengthening and the neuromuscular alignment issue that's going on to try and help these kids out. It's also really good for injury prevention down the track when they get older, because if you can get these exercises in at an early age, which is hard, but if you can get them in at an early age, then that helps their neuroprogramming and their strength for down the track. Now these exercises are pretty basic and pretty easy to do, even just at home, and you don't have to worry about too much load with these kids. You just need to get the muscles activated, get them working, get their brain thinking about alignment and getting it practiced lots of times to make it stick. So let's have a look at those exercises. Okay, the first and probably most important one we're gonna work on is getting a hip external rotation correct or getting it working to try and help that knee control. And the reason we work up in the hip first is that there's a flow on effect down through the knee and the ankle where those injuries are happening. So if we can affect the strength up here, which is usually one of the most common causes or problems of that knee rolling in, then we've got a better chance of getting this right rather than just starting down at the foot. So with this exercise, now this is clams, you've probably seen clams a lot before. Um, with this one with kids, you need a bit of cueing to try and help improve how they do it because if they just go and raise their knee up like this, they're usually just gonna use this of the thigh and a little bit of the side of the hip, which is not the things we wanna work on. We wanna work on your glutes. And so to get that working properly, what I give them is a few cues. The first one is imagining like there's a piece of paper stuck between their heels and they've gotta try and squeeze that piece of paper first. So they're really pushing both calcaneuses together, okay, which gives them a bit of a trigger up from the brain down into the hip to try and get that muscle fired. The second thing they wanna work on is squeezing their glutes, not raising the knee. So if they've got the two heels together, then they work on, okay, can you squeeze your glutes or your butt cheeks together a little bit? And that'll give them a sort of a pre-firing to get their knee up. And that's obviously, when you look at that, if they bring their knee up, that's going into external rotation. So they're going from internal to external. Now, the height, what we wanna work on is just above the hip line, okay? They don't wanna go just the hip line, they need a little bit more than that. So they need to go above the hip line, but if they go too far, what tends to happen is they roll they roll their hip here, okay? So the whole pelvis moves. So you're gonna make sure that that doesn't move and they're just isolating the hip joint here by just getting that knee up. And the band here is a good little resistance to trigger them to try and resist against something. When we usually start off clams, we go without the band, but this purpose, the feedback for the kid is really, really good. So if they can give a light band they can stretch on, then they know what they're sort of trying to do. They've got a resistance to pull on once they feel that tension, then they can go, oh, okay, I know where to go. So raising the knee up above hip height, but making sure that glute is squeezed, the hip is turned on, the heels are really pushed together, will give them a really good external rotation movement that is focused on the proximal part. So the clams are a really good one to start with. All right, the second exercise is working on their glutes again, but this time it's in standing, which is a nice little preparation into the single leg squat we're gonna do in a moment. Now for her, when she stands on one leg, we're gonna use a ball as a contralateral or counter weight, if you like, for her right hip. So if she puts the ball against a wall, now you can use a ball or a softball like this, or you could just use a soccer ball, something like that she needs to push on, even a towel would work. So if you stand on your right leg for me, what she does at this point here is making sure firstly that that foot is facing straight, okay? You don't want that foot outwards like this, okay? You want it nice and straight. You're gonna try and train her to be in a straight position. Also, you want a little bit of a bend at the knee, okay? So when she's in that position here, not too far forward, she's a little bend in the knee, a little bend in the hip, so she tilts forward a bit, then she's in the right position. Now, at that point there, you can almost start the clock running. She's gotta try and do at least 10 seconds, maybe up to 30 seconds of a hold, but she's gotta push into that ball as hard as she can, okay? And what that'll do is really fire up in that right hip, okay? And that will be the stability component of that glute that we need to control the knee, okay? And you'll probably find when she does that and gets better at it, this knee will get straighter and straighter and straighter. Have a rest again. The other thing you gotta try and work on is make sure 
that the knees are not too close together, okay? She needs to be parallel, okay? So this leg and this leg parallel and not letting that knee sort of crash inwards. She's also not allowed to get the hip, hip dropping. So if we try that again for me, so you just gotta make sure, are the hips level here, okay? Is she, our knees relatively in line here and, and nicely sort of spaced apart and making sure that foot's not crashing in. We're gonna to come to foot stuff in a moment, but as long as you're trying to think about keeping that arch up a little bit, keeping that knee directly over the middle of the foot and then making sure she doesn't just push the knee forward, she actually leans forward a little bit as well, which will engage her hip a little bit more. Then she pushes into the ball that way, she really feels it on this side and that's a really, really good exercise to switch all that on, but also tell her brain what alignment she needs to start focusing on and practicing. Okay, number three is working on her medial arch. Now, this one is a really good one to try and teach the brain how to lift the arch up, how to keep that knee back in control using a little bit of hip and the leg. And it's a nice one to do before that single leg squat. So we've gone from a clam, firing up that glute, we've gone from a isometric, standing exercise and now we're working on some arch those three components are going to be really good to lead into the single leg squat that she needs to do in an automatic sort of movement so for this one i would use a little piece of board or something like that. you're just going to raise that foot off the ground so she can roll in and roll out i'll show you what i mean if you stand on that one for me see okay she wants to stand on that a little bit just off it okay so she's not fully on the board what it will allow her to do is roll that foot inwards and crash inwards off the board and then lift up again. So she's trying to stand on one leg, okay, and she might, you might need to get them to balance on you for the moment or balance on a wall. She's just trying to learn to let that slowly crash inwards where she doesn't want to be and then use the, trying to use the foot and the shin, which is a tibialis posterior and the medial arch here to lift that foot up. And you'll notice when she does that, what happens? The knee comes in line. So you also notice when she rolls her foot and lets her foot collapse completely, her knee rolls in. Now, if you can get them lifting that arch up, but keeping the big toe relatively down, okay? So what I mean is I don't want that whole toe coming up like that. She's got to keep her forefoot down as much as she can. But if you can get that arch coming up and get that knee in line, you're halfway there. All you've got to get them doing after that point there is to try and, when they lift that foot up, so go from there for me, when they lift that foot up, they've got to try and squeeze their glute at the same time. So she wants to lift her foot, squeeze her glute. And so if you're working on the proximal component here, the distal component here, the one in the middle, which is, you know, the part that's getting injured, if you like, is nicely coming into line. So she's learning knee control through hip and foot because let's face it the quads don't do knee control okay so if you can get this lifting from going from down to lifting up pull it up again for me squeezing the glute at the same time you're going to repeat that movement you know over and over and over you're going to get some really good neuroprogramming through that you're also getting some really good strengthening arching for the foot okay the final exercise is getting her working on a single leg squat or a step down and trying to do that movement without her knee rolling in. Now you may find this is the sort of movement that you see their knee rolling in anyway, and they do take a while to get this right. Now I've put it back in shoes because this is a loaded movement. There's no weights, but it is a loaded movement for the leg. So we wanna make sure we get as much arch support as we can to help them out. So for this exercise, she's gonna stand on one leg. So you stand on one leg for me, Sam. And when she does a step down or single leg squat, you don't have to get it doing off the box. You can just get it on the floor. She's gonna bend the knee, sit back, bring her shoulders forward. Now what you don't want to see is the knee coming in towards me. So you don't want it sort of crashing in this way. So she's got to learn to keep a knee in line. Now for kids, a few tips would be, if you've got a deck, then obviously they can have their knee going in the line of the panels, okay? Maybe you have kitchen tiles, that sort of thing, so you can follow a line of where that middle of the knee over the middle of the foot. So either in between the lines or having a foot come over a little bit, if you put their foot come over a little bit, put their foot in the middle here, then they can say, okay, keep your knee in line with your foot over that line. So when they squat, they know what they're aiming for. The other one you can work on is if they stand on their right leg, see, stand on your right leg for me. Yep. What I can do is, okay, if I get in front of them here, I can say, okay, when you do a one-legged squat, keep your knee 
in between my hands. And if you just focus, okay, if your hands are in the line of the foot, you keep your hands there. When she puts her knee forward, it stays in between the hands and doesn't touch each side of the hands. You know when a knee is rolling in as if it comes in and crashes on the inside of your hand. So that's a little good cue because sometimes kids just need a little bit of feedback, a bit of cueing of, okay, I get it, I know what to do. It's a little game if you like. Can you keep your knee in between my hands when you squat? And so they can just do repetitions of trying to focus on knee in between hands, which really ticks the box on the neuromuscular component. So they get the repetitions done, which gives them the strengthening, but also that neuromuscular reinforcement of where their knee is supposed to track, okay? The other thing you gotta make sure of when you're doing this exercise, they're not just shoving their knee forward and focusing on just the knee all the time. The really important component is making sure they use that hip or that glute work you've just been doing. You've gotta make sure you put that into practice now by when they bend their knee, if you do that for me again for me, they're actually sitting back at the hip and then their shoulder comes forward, which gives the load over the foot correct, okay? If they stay back the hip and their knee goes forward, they're just gonna start loading up their kneecap, which you don't want. You wanna make sure the knee is going forward, but also their hips are going forward at the same time. And the last thing you wanna think, focus on is they will start putting weight through the back leg. That's natural. They wanna sort of stabilize and take the weight off this leg. You've gotta slowly over time get them to not put weight through this back knee. That's a tap only, so if you try that again for me, Sin. So it's a tap, and then come back again. Now she's practiced this a few times, so she knows what she's doing. You may find it takes quite a long time for them to stop rolling in like that. The whole game is to try and keep their knee in line. That's what you're after, to try and improve their alignment, stop those problems happening down the chain. So give those four a crack, and see if you can help your kid improve their knee alignment.